Welcome and thank you for standing by at this time. All participants will be in listen-only mode. Periodically, we will conduct a question and answer session. For you to ask a question, please press the star key followed by the number one. This call is being recorded, and if you have any objections, you may disconnect at this point. Now, I will turn the call over to Jennifer Pratt. Jennifer, you may now begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Jennifer Pratt, and on behalf of the American Heart Association, we are so excited to welcome you here today as we share more about the American Heart Association's Workplace Health Solutions and Workplace Health Achievement Index. Today, we look forward to helping you enhance your journey toward building a culture of health with an in-depth look at the American Heart Association's Workplace Health Solutions, which is a continuous quality improvement program for the workplace. In this session, we will learn from experts in the field about the science behind the Workplace Health Achievement Index and Life Simple 7. Hear how your company can utilize the index and AHA resources to promote a healthier workplace and learn how to enroll and be recognized for your efforts. We are also very pleased to be joined by a terrific group of presenters and guests including Dr. Eduardo Sanchez and Dennis Milne from the American Heart Association and Dr. Ross Arena from the University of Illinois at Chicago. As we get started, I would like to share a few reminders with you. Today's webinar is being recorded and a link to access the recording and materials will be sent to you after the conclusion of the webinar. If you are joining us on audio only and are having any difficulty logging into the web portion, simply press star zero to reach an operator. We'll pause along the way today to ask you some questions using the polling feature. And you can practice now with our first questions of the day that you should be seeing on your screen. We'll also be taking your questions throughout the presentations using the Q&A feature to the right of your screen. We'll have time for Q&A at the end of the call. Um, and again, please use the web tool to submit any questions. We'll be monitoring them throughout the, the session and we'll pose them to our presenters at the right time on your behalf. We have a lot to cover, so if you think of something additional afterwards, you can certainly email it to whs at heart.org. Without any further delay, it's my pleasure to introduce our first guest speaker, Dr. Eduardo Sanchez. He is the AHA's Chief Medical Officer for Prevention and our newly appointed Chief of the Center for Health Metrics and Evaluation. Eduardo has been instrumental in connecting the scientific leaders to develop the AHA's workplace health solutions. Good morning to most and good afternoon to some. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be a part of this uh, presentation today. Um, I'm going to tee things up and then introduce our um, <clears throat> following speaker, Dr. Ross Arena. For nine decades now, the American Heart Association has been um, developing and providing science-based health programs and resources to companies and their employees. Uh, with an estimated 155 million working adults in the United States, the workplace offers a tremendous opportunity um, to meet people where they are, work with them where they are, if you will, um, to improve their health and the well-being of at least 155 million Americans, um, and apply the science uh, and um, um, study that um, we know and have um, learned can make a difference. Uh, we continue to work with uh, our corporate partners to find solutions that make um, the healthy choice the easy choice, that create the conditions for health, um, and that, again, Im improve the health and well-being of our U.S. workforce and um, presumably uh, those who are in um, homes with them and are dependent on them. Many of you who are on this call participate in our Fit Friendly Worksite program. Uh, this program currently reaches over 4,600 worksites uh, that include 11 million employees and has been a big part of our efforts in this space of corporate wellness for nearly a decade. About three years ago, um, the American Heart Association CEO Roundtable was created, um, a relatively new key group of volunteers and organizations that has come together to address the problem of declining health and rising health care costs in America's workplaces. Since the Roundtable began, uh, more, than more than two dozen CEOs, currently 26, 
from um, many uh, uh, organizations that, that you will recognize, Macy's, AT&T, Kaiser Permanente, um, and you can look up uh, the list for the other 23. Oh, let me mention the American Heart Association have collectively joined this collaborative that's committed to thinking about how to better apply science to improve the health of their employees, their companies, and their communities. Together, the AHA and its CEO Roundtable members are sharing um, innovations in workplace health. Um, it is a space where um, CEOs and or their designees can talk about some of the things that they might be doing um, uh, in a sharing way, um, but also in a way to receive uh, perhaps some um, constructive feedback about how things might be made better. Um, and, and, and this work uh, is going to very directly potentially improve the lives of the more than 8 million employees and family members that are um, covered, if you will, by the CEO Roundtable Collaborative. Nielsen um, has been one of the CEO Roundtable partners, and they conducted a survey among uh, the CEO Roundtable companies. And that survey revealed a number of very interesting findings, um, some that won't surprise you. Employees generally overestimate their individual health status. Um, in other words, we all think we're healthier than we might actually be. And while 74% um, report being in very good or good health, 42% of them have been diagnosed with a chronic health condition. Now, let's be clear, and I want to be clear. I love that person who um, might be diagnosed with something and thinks of himself as being in very good health. Um, how you feel about it uh, makes a huge difference, but this might be a disconnect that's worth exploring. Also, um, one of the findings is that um, Many, if not most, employees report getting their numbers, um, the information about their health from a biometric screening, an event where um, in the work site perhaps some blood work was done and some measurements were made, but very few of those employees remember any of their numbers apart from their body mass index. So they know how tall they are and how much they weigh, but they may not know their blood pressure, blood glucose, or cholesterol levels which can be very important. Um, another one of the discoveries is that um, it appears that workplace culture matters when it comes to participation and engagement in wellness programs. Um, the entire organization has a role to play, but encouragement from senior management builds a supportive environment for being and staying healthy in the workplace. Few employees are currently aware of their CEO's involvement in wellness, and yet it is clear that when employees are aware, um, it, it gives them um, a sense of um, um, well-being uh, that uh, might be worth tapping into. Employees who are encouraged by senior management uh, are more likely to value wellness programs and trust management's motives for offering them. Workplace wellness programs are associated with positive outcomes for both employees and employers, we found through the Nielsen report. And encouraged employees also report feeling better, being more productive, and having higher job satisfaction compared to employees who do not feel encouraged. The American Heart Association has taken on a leadership role as a national professional organization to play in the space to increase the adoption, implementation, and evaluation of comprehensive workplace health promotion programs. Um, Dr. Arena, one of our, um, uh, our, our next speaker, uh, was a co-author on a scientific paper uh, uh, published by uh, uh, the American Heart Association that talks about the science of workplace health and the importance of a scientific approach to um, um, workplace health. The work that we're doing is aligned with and in service of our strategic impact goal to improve the cardiovascular health of all Americans by 20% 
while reducing deaths due to cardiovascular disease and stroke by 20% by the year 2020. The American Heart Association has long been an organization committed to reducing deaths due to cardiovascular diseases and stroke, and um, very much in the game of reducing tobacco use in this country. But the, but the American Heart Association has expanded its scope, expanded its commitment um, to go beyond just reducing tobacco use and reducing deaths to improving heart health, the cardiovascular health of all Americans. The AHA has a definition for cardiovascular health. Um, if you were wondering, how do you define it? And that's called Life Simple 7. Um, and those simple seven things that define cardiovascular health are not smoking, eating healthfully, being physically active, maintaining a healthy weight, a healthy blood pressure, a healthy blood glucose, and a healthy cholesterol. If at 50 years old you are good on all of those seven things, um, you will live a long, healthy life compared to those who may not be so good on those seven things. Over 50 studies from the United States and around the world have shown that a high cardiovascular health score, um, high is good, is associated with a lower risk of heart disease, stroke, and a handful of other non-cardiovascular disease conditions like some cancers, depression, um, a sense of uh, uh, not being so well, and diabetes. So it's not just heart disease and stroke profile that improve with um, a, a, a high cardiovascular score, but a number of other, of other um, um, related and sometimes not so related conditions. On average, though, U.S. adults uh, without a diagnosis of heart disease, which is low, um, have um, very low medical care costs compared to individuals with a, um, with a, I, 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 let, let, me, let me say that again, I'm confusing myself, listeners. So if you have a high cardiovascular health score, you are healthy, you, medical care costs associated with that are substantially lower than the health care costs associated with individuals who have low cardiovascular health scores. So simple seven predicts health, and simple seven also predicts health care costs. And I think you can see that on the slide. We believe, and maybe more importantly, um, the members of the CEO Roundtable have come to believe that Life Simple 7 is a straightforward way to assess current cardiovascular health status on the one hand and predict disease and cost on the other hand, um, as well as, um, maybe more importantly, to inform immediate action that can be taken to improve cardiovascular health. So, we and the CEO Roundtable have adopted and recommend that wellness programs track health using Life Simple 7. While it is about heart health, it informs and tells us something about overall health, as I tried to suggest earlier. So, at this point, um, I would like to turn the talking over to Dr. Ross Arena who we're so honored to have here today. He is a very hardworking um, American Heart Association volunteer, and volunteer means he does all this hard work um, uh, out of the goodness of his heart, um, who has helped to author several AHA policy and scientific statements. He is a professor and head of the Department of Physical Therapy at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Dr. Rena is a fellow and an active member of the American Heart Association, the European Society of Cardiology, and the American College of Sports Medicine. He is also a chairman and founding fellow of the European Society of Preventive Medicine. Dr. Rena's scholarly interests include exercise training and other healthy lifestyle initiatives across the lifespan. Um, Ross, you take over, and listeners, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Eduardo, and uh, hello, everyone. It's really an honor to be here to um, take part in this in this great uh, conversation in a very important uh, area moving forward. 
Um, so some of you might on, on the call on the on the conference might be asking why is is AHA working in the employer space, um, particularly when there are a number of, of wellness vendors that are already out there, um, and how is this initiative different? And I think we're with uh, Eduardo's great lead in and, and the other information we have out there that's um, certainly taking shape, uh, but. Um, heart disease and stroke together is the leading cause of death. I think many of us know that, um, not only in the U.S., but around the world. And, um, and the American Heart Association is uniquely qualified to create scientific guidelines to improve the quality of workplace health and, and wellness programs. Um, so as we start to think about healthcare moving forward, uh, we have, are shifting towards, necessarily so, a preventive model where chronic disease and non-communicable disease, cardiovascular disease at the forefront, is, is the primary health concern in the U.S. and, and most countries around, around the world. And as Eduardo pointed out, uh, the way forward in changing that healthcare trajectory, changing that chronic disease trajectory, is in large part through a healthy lifestyle. And so the question is, is why is, is AHA in this space um, and, and so heavily invested? What, what a wonderful opportunity to engage a substantial majority portion of, of the population in healthy lifestyle interventions that are going to make a meaningful difference. So in a way, um, the, the workplace um, has become a space that, that is representative of or part of the future healthcare model, uh, where we traditionally think of healthcare as the hospital and outpatient clinics, where you you see um, your physician or you go towards your you go to your physician. Uh, a number of us in the space now are, are thinking of the healthcare system of the future, shifting much more so much more so towards the community uh, where people live, work, and go to school. So the logic model that you see now on this slide was created by the AHA's Workplace Health Steering Committee, and it shows you the roadmap to our planned activities and the metrics for evaluating success. Our activities, which include launching the index and encouraging the adoption of Life Simple 7, is underpinned by a continuous quality improvement framework. This, is a lot, this allows us to learn and refine our activities as we go along. Uh, so really there is a, a evidence base for worksite health and wellness and it is continually growing um, and, and AHA uh, is a key player in aligning that evidence with, with how the, the, the workplace um, looks with respect to um, wellness initiatives. In April of last year, the AHA published a presidential advisory titled Workplace Wellness Recognition for Op Optimizing Workplace Health. I, I had the honor of being on that um, advisory statement. It's a wonderful document that is freely available on the web. If, um, if any of you haven't seen it, you should definitely take a look at it. Uh, based on the review of the current evidence of recognition programs and scorecards that measure employee health programs, the advisory uh, through this statement uh, recommended that AHA establish a comprehensive assessment of a workplace health program that encompasses, encompasses organizational culture, structure, processes, and health co outcomes based upon the common metric of Life Simple 7 that, that Eduardo had discussed. It is our aspiration that the national adoption of the index metrics in Life Simple 7 will allow companies to collectively measure progress to improving the cardiovascular health of American workers and hopefully their families as well. So that's another goal is, you know, you're, you're touching upon the lives of workers and, and hopefully that starts to permeate through um, other individuals not, that are not directly involved in that workplace per se. Uh, to address uh, gaps in common standards around comprehensive workplace wellness programs. The recommendations aim to improve the design, measurement, and recognition of these programs, and if adopted by employers, could significantly impact efforts to improve cardiovascular health of the American workforce. And, and that is um, a, a very important point, and study after study has shown that individuals, as Eduardo alluded to, and I'll make the point again because it's a very important one, individuals who lead a healthier life either throughout their lifespan um, or who make a change at any point in their life towards a healthier lifestyle, being physically active, um, eating, uh, partaking in a nutritious diet, uh, maintaining a healthy body weight, um, maintaining a healthy weight and so on, have a significantly better health trajectory. It's never too late to make that change. And it is associated, as Eduardo pointed out, with, um, with much lower health care costs 
um, which is is so there's a a um, a doing right by the individual uh, framework and, and case that can be made. And it's a very strong case for quality of life and, and health outcomes for the individual, but an equally strong case can be made for the economics as well. Uh, Eduardo, Bri oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the AHA's index is unique because it assesses and measures the quality, comprehensiveness, and effectiveness of organizations, workplace health programs, and improvements in Life Simple 7 metrics. Heart disease and stroke are the leading cause of death in our nation, as we discussed, yet we currently lack a common framework for assessing how the health of the nation's workforce is changing over time. And, and Life Simple 7 does that very elegantly, um, and, and it is easy to ob obtain. Uh, based on the AHA recommendation, the index assesses two broad dimensions. Does a company have a culture and uh, have a culture and processes that support a workplace culture of health? The workplace culture of health dimension is scored and ranked on seven organizational best practices. Leadership, very important piece, reporting outcomes, programs, policies, and environment, partnerships, engagement, and communications. Does a company track changes in the heart health of employees based on Life Simple 7 metrics is, is the other piece to this, the other dimension. These two dimensions are also supported by a robust, continuous quality improvement framework, allowing the employer to assess the quality of their workplace health program. Implement improvements based on benchmarking reports and reevaluate uh, the impact of these changes on outcomes, so being fluid over time and, and adapting to the culture. Very few scorecards and recognition programs use a common metric for evaluating health outcomes, and we believe that Simple 7, Life Simple 7 is a simple, evidence-based, scientific-based assessment um, of the cardiovascular health of, of the workforce, and being scientifically based and aligning that principle with what we're trying to do here is, is, is central to this, that, that these are the metrics that matter. These are the me measurements that, that matter to one's health most importantly. Uh, Eduardo briefly mentioned the science that shows the, the wider health and, and mental health benefits of, of having a high cardiovascular health score. I don't think anyone could really argue that this is the case, not only in the U.S., but around the world, that if you lead a healthier life, and so healthy lifestyle now is considered medicine, it's a medical intervention, it's, it's a poly pill, if you will, that all individuals should partake in on a daily basis. Um, and so we believe that this common framework can be applied across cultures. My Life Check is a risk assessment tool that is underpinned by a robust, um, robust science of Life Simple 7. And again, it's important to, um, to highlight the, the evidence base behind this and the time that was taken to align the evidence with best practices that we're proposing. Several studies published since 2010 have validated the construct of heart health and the predictive validity of the heart health score, and, and, and that is, is very important to point out. Uh, so um, the AHA, the, the, as far as the Workplace um, Health Steering Committee, uh, the last slide, I, I don't see the slide shifting yet. I'll maybe wait a second. There we go. The AHA is committed to science and research, and we will continue to test the effectiveness of our own tools. Uh, so we don't plan to, to put this out there and, and, and just let it be that, that we really are going to be engaged in um, seeing how this very rich tool and framework um, works in real life and then titrating things as, as it moves forward. And we have a wonderful team. Uh, we have established a workplace health steering committee, and I am, have the honor of being on that committee along with um, uh, 15 other volunteer uh, um, individuals, AHA volunteers that are very committed to, to this work uh, to help guide the research moving forward and the evaluation agenda as well. Um, so thank you for... Um, allowing me to be uh, a part of this, and uh, that, is, that is my portion. Thank you so much uh, for, for your contributions today, Dr. Arena, and to Eduardo as well. At this point, let's, uh, let's just take a pause. We have got a, um, a couple more polling questions that we would love for you to participate in. The first thing, does the senior leadership at your organization participate in your workplace health program? And the second is, what uh, American Heart Association resources does your organization currently use? Uh, I believe we have a couple of questions that have come in from today's participants. So while you're filling out that, that polling, um, one of the questions was, is the Life Simple 7 measured by a biometric screening? Um, thanks, Jennifer. Hi, this is Chris Collins. The Life Simple 7 
measures can be captured either through uh, a health uh, risk assessment questionnaire uh, or through a biometric screening. Uh, typically, it's a combination of both because biometric screenings usually uh, collect your BMI, your blood pressure, your total cholesterol, and your uh, blood glucose, whereas your physical activity levels um, and your nutrition uh, are measured through um, health assessments. Thank you for that, Chris. And another question, so how is the, the data collected? Is it, is it uh, self-reporting? So um, again, uh, depending on what instrument you use, the data can be either completely self-reported. Many health assessments, uh, many companies don't actually use biometric screening because of the cost involved. Um, and uh, so what you will find is a combination of either self-reported data or a, com uh, or a combination of uh, employees who self-report data and employers who pull in biometric data through their screenings. Wonderful, thank you. Now I would like to introduce our Director of Strategic Initiatives, Denny Milne, to talk through the Workplace Health Program and the actual logistics of participation. Uh, thanks, Jennifer. Uh, Dr. Arena mentioned the continuous quality improvement uh, framework, so that's what this slide is demonstrating. Um, and the point of entry for a company to assess their current status by taking the index is shown in the upper right-hand corner, and that is our Workplace Health Achievement Index. Uh, just a little bit about how the index is, uh, is structured. Uh, <clears throat> this is an online index. It consists of 55 uh, what we call structure and process questions. These are in a yes, no, or multiple choice format. And by answering these questions, <clears throat> basically you're doing, you're doing a self-assessment on how well your organization meets all of the best practices on creating a workplace culture of health. The other part of the index <clears throat> uh, that factors in are three performance measures. So not only are we letting uh, organizations assess um, their culture of health, but also we want to factor in some measures that will actually gauge improvement in, uh, in employee health outcomes. Uh, the index uh, structure and process questions are organized around seven best practice categories. Uh, each question carries a point value with higher points awarded to those measures which are most predictive of improved health outcomes. Uh, once you complete the index, <clears throat> then uh, the uh, system generates a score. Uh, there are a maximum of 250 points, and you as an employer can use the index to identify where there may be gaps in your um, program offering uh, that you may want to improve. So the next part of the cycle would be guidance using AHA resources. Once the, those gaps are identified and once you take the index uh, self-assessment, um, we will make sure that we have resources available to you to go ahead and make those improvements in your uh, workplace culture of health. So, for example, we are making the My Life Check Heart Health Assessment available online. So, again, that is an employee engagement and health assessment tool for your employees. Um, we also have created other assets, like we have a workplace health uh, playbook, which features case studies um, for employers uh, to access to see best practices that other organizations have implemented uh, around building a workplace culture of health. So again, all these resources are on our um, uh, uh, heart.org workplace health website, and I'll be going into a little more detail on these uh, in a minute. Uh, just want to mention that the index is available to update at all times. So <clears throat> the next step in the cycle is we want you to go in, make uh, improvements in your organization, and then go back in and reassess by going back into the index. Um, we encourage companies to go back in as many times as, uh, as you need to, uh, to, uh, to take the index and hopefully change some of those answers uh, from no to yes, which then will increase your score and help you track where you're making improvements in your culture of health. The next step in the cycle is um, we are offering a recognition and award construct for participating companies. And these awards are determined based on the index scores. And I'll be going into more detail on these uh, in a couple of slides. And the final piece to our cycle is data insights. And data insights are key in helping employers to make further enhancements to their workplace health programs. 
Um, so we're using the data that is captured through the index and also through the My Life Check tool. And we're doing a couple different ways in terms of we're doing data analytics and making those available. Um, one is that participating employees can access a My Life Check dashboard. And those reports will allow you to see the aggregate information for employees that have taken the My Life Check tool. So you can see the aggregate heart scores, the number of employees completing the My Life Check, uh, and the percentage of your employees that fall into poor, intermediate, or ideal cardiovascular health. Uh, also, on completion of the index, uh, you'll be able to see benchmark reports that are available for employers to compare their scores against the aggregate score of, of uh, other employers taking the index. So you can see your individual company report and compare that against your peers by employer size and also by uh, industry type. Finally, um, AHA is exploring a collaboration with IBM Watson Health to integrate the Watson supercomputer as a back-end data integration for purposes of conducting additional and more sophisticated data analytics. So we're hopefully going to be rolling that out at the end of this uh, calendar year. So uh, many of you are already uh, participants in the Fit Friendly program. I just want to take a, a second to go ahead and do a compare and contrast between Fit Friendly and the new Week Workplace Health Achievement Index. Um, the, the biggest distinction is Fit Friendly is a recognition application process versus the index isn't an application process, it is a continuous quality improvement cycle where companies are encouraged to update their index scores at any time. Uh, other uh, similarities though, that Fit Friendly involves process questions as does the index. Uh, Fit Friendly has process questions on physical activity, nutrition, tobacco, and culture policy, as does the index. In fact, some of the same topics that uh, are in Fit Friendly are now carried over into the index. They may be worded differently, but they're included under one or more of the seven best practice categories. Um, the index includes questions on several best practice measures in addition to those that were included in Fit Friendly. Uh, I mentioned before the index generates a score. Uh, based on taking the uh, answering the 55 process uh, structure questions, but also uh, on performance measures. And um, we are offering uh, the opportunity for uh, organizations to participate uh, in terms of importing the performance measures into the index tool in two ways. That can be accomplished by either offering the My Life Check tool to your employees so that My Life Check automatically feeds the performance measures into the index for scoring or if your organization collects the Life Simple 7 data already through like a health risk assessment or other um, uh, assessment, then if you have another source of the information, we will actually work with companies to uh, walk them through the process and how to import that information into the index for purposes of scoring and also for uh, index recognition. Uh, the other um, compare and contrast, uh, Fit Friendly has a platinum and gold recognition level. Uh, the Workplace Health Achievement Index uses an Olympic-style designation of bronze, silver, and gold, and both of these programs do offer a more prestigious award construct. I uh, want to go into a little more detail on the index itself and how it's structured. Uh, we've mentioned already that there are 55 structure and process questions. They're all organized across seven different um, best practice categories, which we refer to as our seven pillars. You can see here the number of questions for each of the different categories, the number of points, and how they're weighted in terms of the percentage of the, uh, of the point value. Uh, again, as Dr. Arena had mentioned, the index was guided by our presidential advisory that was published in April of 2015 in the uh, AHA's Journal of Circulation. Uh, so this is all best, uh, based on the uh, uh, literature reviews and, and also compilation of all the best practices. Um, Again, you have the 55 structure process questions, and then we have the performance uh, metrics. And those performance metrics, again, uh, are the percentage of employees that have completed a Life Simple 7 assessment. And again, that can either be through by taking the My Life Check tool or importing that data through um, uh, another source if you're already collecting the information. Um, also, we uh, uh, get points for the index score for the aggregate health score for your entire workforce population. And then we'll also be measuring year-on-year -year improvement in your heart score. So um, uh, that would be for companies that are returning and participating in year two. So now a little bit about the recognition and the award construct. 
Um, based on industry feedback from a marketing research survey, um, we found out that the, um, uh, the award construct that was of most interest was the Olympic style um, uh, scoring. So uh, what we are doing is we have, uh, again, there are um, 250 maximum points for taking the index, and then we will be recognizing companies at either the bronze, silver, or gold achievement level based on their total index score. Uh, this allows for multiple companies to be recognized as long as they meet a minimum cutoff point that we set for each of the tiers. Um, companies that achieve the gold recognition level will also be eligible for a more prestigious Healthiest Workplace Award, uh, and we'll be awarding those uh, based on two main categories. We'll be awarding those based on employer size and industry type. Um, you see two different um, uh, scoring levels here. Uh, I do want to point out for our first inaugural year, uh, since companies will not have a year-to-year -year, um, uh, comparison since they're first-year participants in terms of the uh, improvement in the heart score, our first year cycle was based on 217 points as opposed to the 250 points. So I did want to make sure to, uh, to point that out. Uh, how we are awarding the recognitions and the awards. So every year uh, on June 30th, um, midnight Pacific time, we will be collecting the index scores as they currently exist on the system and we'll be using that information to determine the recognitions and the awards for, the, for that particular uh, fiscal year. Um, we also want to point out that for calendar 2016, uh, for those of you that participate in Fit Friendly, we are running and offering the Workplace Health Achievement Index and Fit Friendly program. Um, they will run in parallel concurrently. So companies may participate in both programs, uh, especially Fit Friendly companies who are renewing. So again, as a reminder, there are two Fit Friendly cycles. We just finished our April 1st um, uh, submission, and then we have another November 1st, 2016 submission coming up. Following the November 1st Fit Friendly application cycle, the Fit Friendly program will be sunset and we'll be completely transitioning over to the new um, Workplace Health Solution and the index. Um, I also want to point out that we have different options if you're interested in using My Life Check. So there are three versions of the My Life Check cardiovascular health assessment. When a company enrolls on our heart.org backslash workplace health website to use the index, you have the option to also subscribe to a free version of the My Life Check tool. We call it My Life Check Basic. And we offer this to promote it to your employees to actually take the Life Simple 7 assessment. Uh, and again, this will automatically feed your performance measures into the index. The free version has key functions which allow individual employee data to be rolled up into aggregate data for uh, an employer dashboard report. Uh, the individual employees can set up their secure password protected profile to like to take the Life Simple 7 um, assessment and generate a heart score for, uh, which ranges between uh, 0 and 10. Um, some of the other features and functionality, um, both the My Life Check Premium and Basic also allow for integration of wearable devices. So you'll be able to go in once you integrate uh, a wearable device and actually see your uh, wearable dashboard in the My Life Check tool. Uh, for companies potentially wanting a more robust version of My Life Check, we are offering a premium version which has the same features as My Life Check Basic, but with the added functionality of offering health actions. So when an employee goes ahead and completes the Life Simple 7 assessment, um, depending on what measures they may want to take action to improve their overall health, uh, we will be offering uh, very simple steps through health actions that they can opt in for. Uh, the system, once you opt in, will send out email reminders to employees that they have opted in to a 12-week behavior change program. So that is one of the, the, the new features um, for the My Life Check Basic is that additional behavior change um, opportunity. So I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the questions may be regarding the consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages on a weekly basis. Uh, if, that is, if that is an area for improvement, one of the opt-ins may be that you want to uh, commit to drinking one less uh, can of sugar-sweetened beverage per week, and the system will send you email reminders um, on a weekly basis to remind you of opt-in for that activity. And there are several other health options available for employees to opt into. Uh, and then lastly, we also have an API or application programming interface that's available. 
So if uh, companies um, do not want to actually use the My Life Check tool uh, to offer to their employees, this is one of the ways in which we can uh, have companies go ahead and import their Life Simple 7 equivalent data from other sources. And, uh, and that service is free to, uh, to users that sign up for the index. Great. Now is the perfect time to take a pause, Danny. Thank you for all of that information. There is a, a new poll. Um, after hearing about the My Life Check options, we have a new poll um, for the day for you to, to take a look at. And a number of additional questions have come in. So while you're answering that, uh, that poll, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of those questions. There's been a number of questions that have come in uh, regarding um, HIPAA concerns and compliance and uh, how employers are to provide their, their biometric data to the AHA. So again, I'll, I'll have Chris uh, answer that for us. Uh, thanks, Jen. So um, obviously the AHA respects data privacy and uh, we take that um, aspect of data collection and storage um, very seriously as a consumer advocacy organization. And all of our data systems are designed across the prevention and treatment spectrum to take that into consideration. So just a technical point, the structure and process questions in the index do not contain personal identifiable identific uh, identification uh, information, so they are not actually subject to HIPAA, but the Life Simple 7 metrics do contain uh, uh, personal information. And so um, as Denny was trying to describe, we have designed the index portal so that companies can either um, submit um, uh, the employee health data uh, through My Life Check within the HIPAA compliant environment that AHA and its vendor has, or we're developing uh, two processes, batch and API application programming interface options for those organizations who want to submit their Life Simple 7 metrics into the index and both of those um, processes use HIPAA compliant uh, protocols. Excellent, thank you. And another question that has come in is, uh, is around the tools that are available for implementation. And we do have a number of tools and resources available at heart.org slash workplace health, including uh, our, our workplace health playbook that's been um, developed in conjunction with our CEO roundtable and Looks, takes a deeper dive into practical applications for improving your process and, and structure measures within the index, as well as the My Life Check rollout guide that can help uh, roll out the My Life Check program with, within a company, um, in addition to a host of other resources, which, um, which as your polling showed, uh, many of you are already taking advantage of. All right, well, let's uh, stay on schedule, and, and Denny will, um, will walk us through the journey. Okay, so the big question, how can my company participate in the AHA's workplace health solutions? Um, so um, the, the place to start is to go out to our website, uh, heart.org backslash workplace health. And this is a new website that was launched on February 1st. Uh, the site is for employers, uh, not employees, but employers to access information and tools on how to go ahead and implement the program. So this is where uh, companies can go to enroll in the, uh, in the program, and I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to do that. So over on the right-hand side is a screenshot of the, uh, of the homepage. Uh, on the homepage of uh, heart.org backslash workplace health, um, visitors have three options. Under the widget that says the journey starts here, uh, you will find um, hot links to learn more information about the Workplace Health Achievement Index and about the My Life Check tool. But also, uh, this is where you can click Get Started to create a company account to be able to go ahead and use Workplace Health Solutions. And I'll walk you through that here in a couple of slides um, later on. The other option is we actually have some companies right now that are already licensing My Life Check, but they have told us they wanted to integrate and link up their existing My Life Check account with the index. So on the right-hand side, you'll see a widget for uh, companies that already are using My Life Check, and basically by uh, clicking on that, an email is sent to us, and, and we work with the company to go ahead and link the index with the My Life Check tool. And then for anybody that has questions, uh, there's a link at the bottom to click for, for more information. So once you, uh, under the, um, uh, the journey starts here, 
Uh, once you go ahead and click on Get Started, the first thing you're going to see is a legal terms and conditions. And while the index and the My Life Check Basic are free, there are still content usage rights and trademark ownership language uh, that we need to go ahead and have you to agree to. But again, I do, I do want to reinforce that the index and the My Life Check Basic are free uh, and they do not cost anything. We just need you to go ahead and accept the uh, terms and conditions. So you must click accept at the bottom of the page to proceed. Once you do that, and once you accept the terms and conditions, then setting up a company account is extremely easy. Uh, the site uses a self-service feature where companies enter three different things. First, you'll enter contact information. Uh, so whoever the individual from your company is that will be the administrator and have access to the admin portal, that's who should be completing this, uh, this information. So entering in the contact info. Then we have a place to opt in or opt out on using the My Life Check tool. So remember, there are two ways to import your performance metrics, either by offering My Life Check to your employee population or by importing the Life Simple 7 equivalent data through another source you currently uh, collect. Uh, and again, we, we walk you through that process if you opt out of using My Life Check. But this is where you would specify if you opt in or opt out to use the My Life Check tool. And then on the far right hand side, uh, a space to create a unique and secure username and password. So this username and password will give your company access to the admin portal that I will talk about uh, here in a, uh, in a second. So then all you have to do is enter that information in and click Create. Once you click Create, the system sends you an automated email. And this email will give you all the tools that you need to get started. So I know it's kind of hard to see that that's an actual email in the upper right-hand corner, but I'm going to walk you through the different components in terms of what you will receive. So this email will send you uh, the My Life Check supporting information that includes a link to My Life Check that the employer will want to forward to their employees so the employees can set up their profiles and take the My Life Check tool. There's also a My Life Check rollout guide. So someone asked one of the questions, what additional resources? This rollout guide will provide you everything you need in terms of a step-by-step -step process on how to go ahead and introduce the My Life Check tool to your employee population. Uh, the rollout guide includes things like um, PowerPoint slides you may want to show your employees. It includes fill-in-the-blank emails from your CEO, from your senior management. It's got everything that you need to go ahead and send the uh, My Life Check out to your employees to get them engaged in the tool. Also, um, this particular um, system does require that there is a six-digit unique company code for your organization. So once you hit create, there is a six-digit company code that is created. Uh, this email will show you what that six-digit unique code is. And that code will be necessary for employees when they sign up to create their employee profile. They have to enter in that six-digit code, and that way the system knows how to aggregate the information up for your employer dashboard reports. Um, then the other piece of this is the admin portal. So again, the admin portal is username and password protected. You remember on the previous slide, you establish your username and your password. You will get a link to the admin portal. And the admin portal is where you will see the My Life Check dashboard report showing your aggregate employee information if your employees are using My Life Check. You'll get access to the index self-assessment and you'll be able to access the index, index benchmarking reports that we mentioned earlier. So we also include user guides on how to use the admin portal. Uh, again, there's the link to the admin portal. And then we also have um, a link to a PDF file of the index questions. Uh, companies told us that they would like to see the questions in advance of going into the index and completing the index online. So you can go in and you can actually download the index questions in PDF format and collect the data ahead of time before going in and, and completing the survey online. Uh, also, as part of this email, we have retained a technology company um, as our uh, customer service support. And so there is a link and a phone number to call them in case you're having any technical difficulties. And then Jennifer mentioned the, um, the resources we have available. There's also a link to our Workplace Health Solutions resource library on our website. So now that you're set with all the tools, uh, this is a screenshot of the entry page for the My Life Check uh, Health Assessment. So once you send this link out to your employees and they go onto the site, this is what they'll see. 
Uh, again, um, you will need to send this link out plus the six-digit code that you received in your, uh, in your email. And, uh, and again, uh, the rollout guide will be, is available to you to go ahead and gives you very helpful hints on how to roll this out to your employee population. So you see on this slide, there are two different uh, entry points in the My Life Check. So for new employee users of the My Life Check tool, they'll want to go ahead and click on Get Started. They'll create their employee profile by entering in uh, and creating a unique username and password, and then also entering in that six-digit company code. And then they're off to the races. They can start taking the My Life Check tool, get their heart score, and benefit from the other uh, uh, information and services that are part of the uh, system. Returning users can then go ahead and sign up where it says uh, sign in at the bottom of that page. Once they're into the My Life Check tool, um, it's very simple. Um, My Life Check consists of 17 easy to answer questions uh, that can be completed in five to seven minutes. Uh, employees will need to know their vitals, their blood pressure, total cholesterol, and blood glucose but the system will still calculate a heart score even if they don't enter that information in. So employees can go back into the system and update their information at any time. Uh, once they go ahead and, and complete the My Life Check assessment, then they'll get their results. Uh, so you can see at the top, the system will tell you what are you doing well and what areas may, uh, you might need to improve, improve upon. And when you click each of these different icons at the top, the system will provide the employers with information at di different levels of, uh, of detail. So we not only have um, AHA content in copy format, we also have video format for uh, employees to go ahead and find out what do they need to do based on the assessment to go ahead and improve their overall cardiovascular health. And then for those uh, companies that are offering the uh, My Life Check premium version, remember one of the features there is that there are different health actions. Uh, this is a sample of what those health actions might look like. And again, it's for employees to go ahead and opt in to commit to taking some of these health actions. So it is a 12-week behavior modification program with the system sending out email reminders to employees to uh, let them know that they did opt in and, and just checking in to make sure that they're still following their course of action. And then the system also provides the individual dashboard reports for employees to track their progress. I do want to reiterate that the individual employee information is totally proprietary. Uh, none of this information appears to any, in the, any of the dashboard reports for the employers. All the employer will get, which is still very valuable information, would be the aggregate information through the dashboard reports. So it's totally uh, secure and HIPAA compliant. Uh, the next piece I want to talk about, if you remember, when you sign up for the program, you, uh, the administrator will have access to an admin portal. And that admin portal is at uh, whsadmin.heart.org. Uh, you will enter in your username and password that you created when you first created your account. Once you get into the admin portal, this is the first screen that you will see. Uh, and, and the first place it goes is the My Life Check dashboard report. So this dashboard will not populate until your employees actually start taking the My Life Check assessment. But there are several different dashboard reports. Uh, so for example, you can see in the upper uh, right hand or left hand corner, this is where you can see like your aggregate heart score. This, so this is the average heart score in aggregate for all of your employees that have taken the My Life Simple 7 uh, assessment. Um, other things that are on here, you can see the drop-down box in the upper right-hand corner. So uh, this is where you can see, the again, the aggregate dashboard report. Uh, there's the index dashboard, which displays benchmark reports, and I'll be going through those in a little bit. Uh, there's a My Life Check organization profile that allows the administrator to change the company profile information should you choose to do so. Uh, this is where you would access the Workplace Health Achievement Index and where you would actually complete the index self-assessment in terms of completing those 55 structure process questions. And then there's a settings tab that allows you to change your username and password and then a place to sign up. So now I want to go through each of the different components. Uh, this is a view of the My Life Check dashboard. It shows the aggregate data for employees to take the Life Simple 7 uh, assessment. Again, administrators do not have access to the individual employee data, only aggregate data. And we have four standard reports that come with using the basic. There are up to 25 standard report formats for companies using premium. 
And the other nice feature we have is you can download the individual de-identified data into an Excel spreadsheet to go ahead and format your own, um, own uh, uh, dashboard reports. Uh, next, I want to talk about the index. So you can see that, again, this is uh, through the admin portal. You access the index. Uh, we've structured the index in a file tab format. So it's broken up into sections. There's an uh, introduction to the index. There's a section for you to complete organization and demographic information on your organization. Uh, this information is used to tabulate the data for uh, doing the benchmark reports. Uh, then we have a tab on the structure and process questions that you need to complete. And then we have a tab on the performance metrics so that once you import your performance metrics, you have access to seeing what that data looks like. Uh, here's the uh, index tab on the structure process questions. So you can see, again, that they're very simple to complete. The questions are either in a yes or no format or a multiple choice format and they're organized around the best practice categories that we mentioned before of leadership, programs, engagement, communications, partnership, reporting outcomes, and policy and environment. Uh, here's the index tab with just a reminder that the performance metrics, um, how that is gathered and collected. You'll be able to see the aggregate performance metrics in your um, index benchmark report, and we'll show you what that looks like here in a second. And then there's a summary uh, tab, so you can go into the summary tab and see uh, whether or not you've completed. So if you don't complete the entire index, you want to go out of the index, come back in, you can go to the summary tab and see how many questions you may have yet to, uh, to answer in each of the different sections. So now on to the, uh, the benchmark reports. So again, uh, you can also access your index benchmark reports. Um, you'll be able to compare your individual score so in this particular slide, it would be the blue bar, uh, against the average score for companies of similar employer size and of similar industry type. So the orange bar you see here would be how your, uh, the score for um, uh, by employer size and then the green bar by industry type. So this is, the, uh, the, again, the benchmark reports that you'll have access to as part of the program. Thank you so much, and thank you all for being with us today. We're just about at, at our time, um, and I do want to assure you that for those questions that we were not able to answer, we will be writing back to you individually uh, using the email address that you provided for registration. We are just going to take two more questions um, before, we, before we close for the day, but again, we will respond to each, each question individually as well. Uh, so the first, we've had a number of questions coming in about the cost for the My Life Check Premium. I have my colleague David here ready to answer. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, very quickly, there is an annual license fee associated with being able to uh, set up the My Life Check Premium and a per eligible employee per month fee. Um, the setup fee, the annual license ranges in the ten to twelve thousand dollar range, and the PEPM fee ranges from forty cents to fifty five cents, depending on the size of your population. Thank you, David. And then another question around uh, the requirement to use My Life Check or submit equivalent data to qualify for that recognition. And again, we have Chris. Thanks, Jennifer. So first of all, you can absolutely participate in the index without submitting your performance data. You will still get a score for your structure and process measures, and you will still receive uh, an almost fully populated benchmarking report showing you how you your performance compares to those of your peer companies by company size and industry sector. However, if you do want to be eligible for recognition as either a bronze, silver, or gold organization, then uh, uh, you will need to complete both the structure process and outcome measures, either by using My Life Check or submitting your Life Simple 7 data through batch or API. And I think the idea is to have a follow-up webinar to this to go through that process a little bit more carefully. And also for you, Chris, what if a, what if our large companies has have many locations throughout the United States? Can we or abroad? Can we use enterprise data and then customize it to individual sites? Um, so the current version of the index is for U.S. work uh, sites only. Um, obviously, we've been approached by 
large organizations for a, for a global version. We haven't yet developed or rolled that out. And second of all, the system is designed so that you can apply both at the work site level and at the enterprise level. Um, obviously, applying at the work site level is operationally more complex, and you would need to you know, coordinate that with your work sites. And so we leave that decision up to um, the companies um, whether they um, do uh, enterprise or work site specific applications. But certainly, we can roll up the uh, work site results into an enterprise wide result. Excellent. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Again, we will send you a link to the recording of today's webinar after it has been uploaded, and please feel free to share, share it with, uh, with your appropriate colleagues. We look forward to starting your journey with you uh, at heart.org slash workplace health. Thank you. Uh, there is going to be a brief survey as well. Thank you. Well, that concludes today's conference. Thank you.